Hello there, this is Glenn Berry from Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to cover four different queries. These will include Query 17, Hardware Info, Query 18, System Manufacturer, Query 19, BioState, and finally Query 20, which is Processor Description. This series of videos is going to go through the complete set of MySQL Server 2019 Diagnostic Information Queries. These queries are available for free at glensqlperformance.com resources. Please keep in mind that I have other sets of SQL Server diagnostic queries for other versions of SQL Server. The queries you see demonstrated in this video are identical or very similar to the queries for older versions and the same concepts apply. Let's start with Query 17. This query reads from the SysDM OS SysInfo DMV, which is documented here. At a high level, this query simply tells you some very useful information about your server hardware. So now let's go ahead and run this query and see what it returns in more detail. As you can see, it returns a lot of information about our processor, a lot more information than older versions of SQL Server did, by the way. So we see that our logical CPU count is 32, and our scheduler count is also 32. The physical core count is 16, and our socket count is 1. It's a desktop machine with one socket, and there's 16 cores per socket. And since it's an AMD Ryzen processor, even though it only has one socket, it shows up with two NUMA nodes. Next, you can see that I've got 64 gigs of physical memory, and my max worker count is 960. Scrolling over to the right, we can see that the affinity type for processor affinity is set to auto. And then the SQL Server start time is showing August 17th, 2020. And you can see that it's been up for 187 hours. And this is important to know in real life because this is going to help you interpret the results of a lot of queries that are subsequent in this set. Knowing whether you've been running just for a few hours or for many days or many weeks or even months makes a difference. And then virtual machine type is set to none, and that means there's no hypervisor present on my host. Now, if it said hypervisor here, that doesn't automatically mean that you're running inside of a hypervisor. It just means there is a hypervisor present. And then soft NUMA configuration is turned on. That's the default. And then the SQL memory model description is conventional since I don't have lock pages and memory enabled. And that's by design since this is my workstation. And finally, the last column is container type description. That's a new column for SQL Server 2019, which has more robust support for containers than older versions of SQL Server did. Next, let's take a look at query number 18, System Manufacturer. This simply reads from the SQL Server error log and looks for the keyword manufacturer. This is going to help you figure out if you're running in a VM or not, because it's going to show you the manufacturer and model number of your system if it's hardware from a known manufacturer. If it's just put together from parts like my system is, it's going to show you something different. If you've recycled your air log since the last time the SQL Server instance was started, this will return no information. And if you haven't recycled your air log in a long, long time, it might take a few seconds to come back. After that, let's go ahead and run this query and see what shows up on my system. So since I put my system together from parts, here's what you see to be filled by OEM. And again, you won't see that if you have a Dell or an HPE or a Lenovo actual server. So it'll show you the manufacturer and model number. Or if it's a VM, it'll show you the hypervisor manufacturer. So it might be Microsoft or VMware or whatever the case may be. So that's what query number 18 shows you. Next, we have query 19, which is the bio state. This reads from the Windows registry and figures out the date of the main system BIOS. Now, this is not going to work on Linux. It only works on Windows. And it's not going to be useful for virtualization, so it's going to show you the BIOS, the virtual BIOS for the hypervisor. But if you've got a bare metal physical server, this can be really useful because once you know the model number of your server, you can go look it up and find out the latest BIOS version and date and compare it to what you get here. So after that background, let's go ahead and run this query and see what it shows on my system. So this comes back and says BIOS release date, and it's July 2nd, 2020. So if I know the model number of my motherboard, I can go to the motherboard maker's support site and find out if this is the latest version of the BIOS or not. And it works the same way for a server from Dell or HPE. And 
This is important, I think, because a lot of security issues get fixed with BIOS updates and memory corruption issues get fixed with BIOS updates. And quite often server administrators don't take a very good uh, job or, or monitor this very closely. So I think as a DBA, you should check this on your database servers. Finally, we have query number 20, which is processor description. This query reads the Windows registry to get some information about your CPU. And that's really very important information for SQL Server, both for performance and scalability reasons, and also for licensing cost reasons. So the processor you have in your database server is extremely important for a lot of reasons. Let's take a look at what happens when we run this query and what information it returns. So when we run this, it comes back only on Windows. It doesn't work on Linux, unfortunately and it tells me the information about my processor. And I've got an AMD Ryzen 9 3950X processor in my workstation. This will show whatever processor you have, whether it's a virtualized machine or not. And so that's good information to know because if it's an old processor, you're gonna to wanna to know about that because maybe you wanna start agitating for an upgrade. And it's just gonna affect your performance on a day-to-day -day basis. Now going back to the query, CPU-Z is a very good utility you can use to find out if your processor is running at its full rated base clock speed or if it's throttled back due to power management. And then I've got a couple of links down at the bottom here to articles I've written on how to select the best Intel processors and the best AMD processors for SQL Server. And these are extremely helpful articles. If you're getting ready to buy a new machine and the processor you're getting ready to pick is not on the list that's in each one of these articles, you're probably making an expensive mistake. This is Glenn Berry and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like more content like this because it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.